Hey everyone, welcome to Princess Gay, I'm your host Connie, and today we are here with episode 8 of The Legend of Vox Machina. Uh, last time we had quite an intense cliffhanger, but one I also don't believe for a second. Um, and it seems like other reactors have been agreeing with me, like I, I, I said before, I'm watching reactions along with this, um, Every time I watch an episode, I watch reactors, other reactors, check out that episode and everything. And, and yeah, it seems to be common that it's like, people are thinking like, oh, that's got to be an illusion or, or some kind of trick. That it's not real. That it, it can't be. Because it's like, they're not going to introduce or reintroduce this character. They're not going to like bring in the fact that Percy does have a living family member just to kill her again. That would be bad writing, especially one episode after her return, right? So, like, the only thing that would make sense in that regard is if that's what happened in the campaign. Is if, like, Matt Mercer is the, um, like, reintroduced, oh, she's alive and everything, but then shortly after, however long it took, it would take in the campaign, because, you know... That would be a lot longer than it would be for here. But maybe, um, Taliesin, I believe, is, uh, Percy's actor. Uh, but maybe he, like, got a really, really bad role, like a, like a natural one. And just, uh, completely fucked it up. I, it's possible. But the problem is, like, when you adapt something like that to a series format, you have to make some changes to make it work for a series. And, and the th problem is, with a series, even if it's only 13 episodes or whatever, having, um, having it done in that way would be so bad of writing. It would be just atrocious. Like, it's just, it would not be okay to do that. Like, it, it's literally the next episode. This is literally a big deal that she was being brought back. With how they were presenting it and, and everything, it's like, it, it's, it's not that it would even be just like anticlimactic or disappointing it would be actively bad and would actively hurt the series e again even if that is how it went in the original campaign it's like some things you just you have to change for it to work in this format like in the campaign i could see that working because of the reasons i mentioned it's like you get a bad role shit like that can happen <laughs> And that, that works for D&D. That works for a campaign. But that doesn't work in this kind of situation. So it's got to be some kind of illusion. It's got to be some kind of trick. Because this this would be a horrible move to just adapt faithfully. Let's put it that way. Um, I don't know exactly what it could be. But we've already seen that at least Scanlan can uh, create illusions of himself that look entirely real so it's not out of the question that someone else could do that too and if you can create an illusion that looks completely real presumably you could create things within that illusion that would look real like slicing a throat if the illusion and the control of it is strong enough then presumably like him running a presumably real blade over the throat of the person they could it could be adjusted the illusion could be adjusted to also add in like the throat slit at that point and all the blood and everything or it could be something else even uh there, there's i feel options here uh but one there's a couple things i am definitely expecting this time one this is going to set percy off like, before it's revealed that it's fake or whatever, this is going to set Percy off. I don't know what Anders was thinking this was going to do. 
But yeah, it's just gonna Percy's just gonna lose it. And it's not gonna be good for Anders. Um, second thing I think is gonna happen in this episode, I think Anders is going to die. I I, I think that we're just continuing along with the thing with all of, uh with Percy going down his uh list basically of all these characters who are going to all keep dying. Anders is very clearly going to be the next one. Uh the third thing I think is going to happen in this episode <sighs> is that obviously this is going to be revealed to be a ruse and that Percy's sister will be all right and will be brought to safety. Either that or she is going to be recaptured by the bad guys. One of the two. Um, but I'm, I'm definitely interested to find out because we definitely need something more at this point. Uh, Scanlan had a big, uh, focus last episode, so maybe it'll just be, um, Percy this time. Maybe s some other character will get a big focus, too. I don't know. <sighs> so, I guess we'll find out. Uh, when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after fades black and fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So I've talked before about how I've heard Steven Root in a lot of things. Um, obviously, we have the likes of Amphibia, we have Gravity Falls, King of the Hill. But it's like, of all the things I've heard him in, he obviously does a more silly, goofy kind of role. A character who a lot of times is very much a... Um, what's the What would be the word for it? A... Not altogether <laughs> trustworthy salesman let's put it that way um because i can't think of the actual word or phrase or whatever right now um but yeah and then in king of the hill he's bill and bill is bill um <laughs> and that's not i'm not saying that is a bad thing by the way i like bill um but it's like this is a very different role than anything i've heard him in and it's also his best role that I've heard him in. Like, we really get to hear his voice acting chops in this role. Um, and especially in this episode. He he just really owns it. He He's menacing. He's a dick. He's completely unlikable in every single way. But his voice acting is so absolutely phenomenal in this that it sells all of that it like to the best degree possible like it makes him actually more unlikable with the fact of of his great voice acting because he he's just so good at sounding scummy you know uh, so, my theory that this was all a ruse, by the way, with uh, Cassandra was wrong. I thought it was going to be an illusion or something, or some kind of, like, trick. But no, he actually did it. <laughs> Luckily, Keyleth was just able to heal her in time. Um, massive kudos to Keyleth. Like, hell yeah. And, I mean, we do know that Pike kind of, uh... <laughs> kind of gave her that uh that mission to act as their healer in a way while pike was you know getting better um keyleth keyleth is just great she's definitely one of my favorites of the crew along with uh vax and uh, i don't know pike probably as well um they're probably my three favorites i just kind of go back and forth on who i like the most um, Keyleth is just really, and the, that boost of self-confidence as well also 
allows her to do that spell to let everybody know that they succeeded. Unfortunately, it does also let the villains know, so now we got zombies next time. Um, but we'll get to that when we get to that. I also want to mention, obviously, the stuff with Pike in this episode, because it was a big part of the episode. Pike has finally made a connection to the Everlight and is made to realize that her loss of connection was never from the Everlight. It was always her own issues. It was her own self-doubts and fears. She especially was afraid that she wasn't worthy of the Everlight anymore because she had become, in her eyes, debaucherous. She started partying with Vox Machina and loving it and getting into all this violence and all, and she felt like, well, I can't have this connection to a holy uh, deity if I'm, if I'm into all of this stuff. And so it, it, it created this mental block within her that is what separated her from the Everlight. She, she didn't realize this, though, and thought the Everlight cut her off. But that was never the case. She cut the Everlight off, it is more accurate. And she's realizing this now. And the Everlight's basically even telling her, it's like, you could still be friends with and hang out with and party with um, Vox Machina. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Being righteous and holy isn't about that kind of stuff. It's just about living truth and doing the right thing. It's like, it doesn't matter if you're, like, having fun drinking and partying and getting into action and stuff. That's that's not a bad thing. And it's like, okay, I can kind of dig the Everlight. It's like, they, they seem like a pretty good deity to me. <laughs> um, I, I like that. I like that mindset. But, yeah, uh... The fight against Anders is really, really badass in this episode. And the way Percy finishes him, ricocheting the bullet so that it just destroys his jaw is amazing. Like, I've seen, obviously, various media where a person's jaw is, like, destroyed like that. Either shot off or ripped off or whatnot. Um, obviously, zombie media, going to that, has a lot of zombies, oftentimes, that are missing their lower jaw and everything. Um, but I'm talking more along the lines of, like, actual, like, people losing it, like, be, having it, again, ripped off or shot off or stuff. I've seen this before. But the, the gruesome way that was delivered was so wonderful. This series is great with the intense, gruesome action. It, it, it really handles it well. And I love just the manner of which it was handled here. The, the visuals, the way it sh like slowed down to show the jaw being torn off, uh, the tongue falling onto the floor and everything. It's like, it, it just, everything was so well, sh like, like, I almost said shot, but that's technically not correct because it's an animated series, but how it was like drawn and just the lighting, the visualization, even the the audio during that. It's just everything just worked perfectly. It was such a good scene. It may sound a little morbid to t say that about a dude getting his jaw shot shot off, but hey, it was it was that good, really. Um yeah, I just I really enjoyed this. Um I I've I, I've been really enjoying this. Cassandra is luckily safe. But I'm, I, I weirdly almost don't trust her. Is that just me? It's like when she and Percy reunited and all, she seemed off. Maybe that was just because she was concerned about what she had just seen him do. But it's like, I don't know. I just feel like that would also maybe be a little... That would also be a little bit much at this point. Especially because it's very clear that Lady Briarwood was really fucking upset. She was, like, really pissed about this. If Cassandra was, like, under their control or something still, I, I almost doubt that Lady Briarwood would be that pissed, would be that upset. I feel like she would more, more be, like, smirking. It's like, oh, we got you. 
something like that. Um, unless Silas maybe has her under his control and maybe Lady Briarwood isn't aware of that? I don't know. Um, I do like how Silas was clearly like kind of questioning his wife there, though. It's like, what the hell are you doing? It's like, <laughs> even he seemed like kind of thrown off by her rage there. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is, uh, getting really intense and each battle is turning out to be a lot more dangerous and a lot more, uh, threatening than the last. And I hope this continues. I hope uh, the next one, who is, I think, that uh, lady that was mentioned in, in his list, um, I hope she's even more of a threat than he than Anders was. Um, we'll see, though. We'll see how it goes. Um, but Pike should definitely be returning soon, based on what we, we're seeing in this episode. Because they really rushed in with her her development and her growth in this one. So, I, I definitely think she's going to be returning soon. Not, like, right away, but soon. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Either way, this was uh, another very good episode. And I would love to hear what you think. So, tell me in the comments below, what are your thoughts on this episode of Legend of Vox Machina? And for now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.